Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to go over Apex section 7.2.1 and this is part two. So if you did not watch the video for part one, just pause for a second and go back and watch the video for part one because you need to understand that before we can understand part two. Great. So we're still talking about solutions and now we're talking about how to increase the rate of dissolution. So yesterday you should have done a lab about this. Okay, and we're going to go over the results of that together now. So if you have a solute and you are trying to dissolve it in a solvent, you need the solute particles to interact with the solvent particles in order for it to dissolve. So we have three different methods here that will make these things happen faster. Okay, so our first method is mixing. So if we have a beaker, here I'm going to represent the solvent by a blue circle, okay? So our solvent is all spread out throughout this, okay? And if you just poured in your solute particles, which I'm representing in red, then they're sort of just stuck at the bottom here, okay? And in order for them to dissolve, they need to interact with each other, right? The red and the blue need to collide. When they're just at the bottom, it's gonna take longer for all of the solute particles to interact with the solvent particles, right? Because they're gonna to have to come from the top and that's gonna take a little bit longer. But if you mix it, then you have your solvent particles all spread out and by mixing it, you are spreading out the solute particles. And that makes it much more likely for the solute and the solvent to bump into each other and interact, and that will cause it to dissolve. So by mixing, you're spreading out the solute particles and making it more likely that the solute and the solvent will bump into each other and interact. The second way we can increase the rate of dissolution is by breaking something into pieces. And this works by increasing surface area. So there are more solute particles that are able to directly contact, contact the solvent particles. So if we have all of our solute in one big clump like this, okay? And again, our solvent is all spread out around it. Then that means that some of these particles in the middle don't even have an opportunity to interact with solvent until the ones outside have, right? So this one needs to interact and disappear before the one that I pointed to can have an opportunity to do so. So that means not all of the solute particles even have the opportunity to interact with the solvent. But if you break it into smaller pieces or you spread it out, then you get the situation like we were talking about above where they are more likely to be able to contact it because all of them are exposed to the solvent particles. Now again, it's still not quite as good as mixing, right, because they're not spread out evenly, but at least all of them have the opportunity to interact with a solvent. So that's the second way. The third way to increase the rate of dissolution is by heating. Now we know from solids, liquids, and gases that heating causes particles to move more quickly. That means that solute and solvent particles are moving more quickly and they're more likely to bump into each other and interact, okay? I like to think about if everybody was walking down the hallway between classes, they're not that likely to bump into each other. But if everybody was running down the hallway, they're much more likely to bump into each other, okay? So again, if we, have it in a cold solution, they're moving slowly, so it's going to take a while for everything to interact, to bump into each other, okay? But if we are moving very quickly, then our solvent particles and our solute particles are more likely to interact more quickly. Okay, because they are moving more quickly than they were, okay? So these are the three ways to increase the rate of dissolution, to mix it, to break it into pieces, and to heat it up, okay? 
and we need to be able to explain why each of those works. Great. The next thing we want to talk about is saturation. So when a solution cannot dissolve any more solute, we say it is saturated, right? So we have our beaker, and if you start adding more and more and more solute, at a certain point, no more is going to dissolve. And it's just gonna sit on the bottom. And then we say it is saturated, it no more can dissolve. If a solution can dissolve more solute, we say it's unsaturated. The amount of solute that can dissolve in a solution is its solubility, okay? So if something is totally full, it's saturated. If it can take more solute, it's unsaturated. And the amount that it can take is the solubility. So it is possible to add more solute after a solution is saturated by increasing the temperature or the pressure. This creates what's called an unstable, supersaturated solution. So let's look at an example. Okay. So here we have some water and we're adding drink mix, like Kool-Aid, okay? So you can see it's dissolving, it's making the solution red. And if we keep going, we're gonna get to a saturation point. It's gonna be pretty soon, saturated. Okay, so at this point, all of the drink mix that can dissolve is dissolved. And you can see on the bottom here, if I add more, it's just collecting more at the bottom. It's not dissolving anymore. And that's how you know you have a saturated solution. However, you can dissolve these little bits at the bottom if you increase the heat, increase the temperature of your solution, or if you added pressure, and then this would dissolve. However, that would make this very unstable, super saturated solution. So let's look at an example of that over here. Okay, so this person has created a super saturated solution of sodium acetate. Okay, so let's look at what this looks like. Okay, so you can see here it is a clear solution, but if you tap it, let's actually go back just a second more. It's clear, everything's dissolved. But if you tap it, this is what happens. It all starts to crystallize state. out. It becomes a solid again. In just a few seconds. You see that spreads out. Isn't that cool? So we see that the sodium and acetate ions recognize until the eventually of that all of the excess past the saturation point is now and solid again. One big crystal. And you can see and if he tips it over. Side, you can see. It's mostly now solid. So, so There's only a like little a bit of that ice, dissolved so, no, part left. A little bit of water. Okay. So there's also only a certain amount of solute that can dissolve in a solvent. When it's reached the maximum, we say it, the solution is saturated. If it hasn't yet reached that maximum, it's unsaturated. And the amount of solute that can dissolve in the solution is called the solubility. Now you can go past the saturation part, point by increasing the temperature or the pressure, but that creates that unstable solution. And you saw in the video that if you scratch it or tap it, it's gonna all become solid again, okay? So what we need to understand from this video is the three ways to increase the rate of dissolution and how they work. And we need to understand what saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated solutions are. Thank you.